welcome to The Near Memo, a weekly conversation about search, social, and commerce. What happened, why it matters, and the implications for local. Hi, everybody. We're back at The Near Memo with David, Mike, and me, Greg. And we're talking about all things local search, social commerce, and increasingly AI uh, as a part of that discussion. Today, we're going to be talking about a new privacy app from Consumer Reports, um, TripAdvisor's review report, and the concept of peak reviews, and then uh, a collection of things around Google, BARD, and AI, and Google's recent uh, PR tour, which they have definitely been on to convince investors that they're still in control of the search world. Um, so I'm going to lead off with a new app that I discovered, uh, I think through an email from Consumer Reports, I'm a subscriber, and it's it's called Permission Slip, and it's a pretty interesting, nicely designed app. The concept is that you give them, Consumer Reports, a bunch of information. It's free. You don't have to be a subscriber to Consumer Reports to use it. Uh, you give them a bunch, of, uh, essentially a profile, then you can go through um third-party websites and retailers. It's it's both traditional retailers, different kinds of websites. Google is there, Yelp is there. They don't have a comprehensive data set, meaning not everybody's in there, but there's a lot of, of companies there. And it allows you to select, don't sell my information if that's available in your particular location, and then, or conversely, delete my data, which would presumably delete your account information or request the deletion of your account information from Amazon or whomever. And I used it a bunch yesterday. I was sort of skeptical about its efficacy. I used it a bunch yesterday and I'm getting responses from the merchants themselves or from the from the website publishers that they receive my request and they're working on it. So it does seem to be legitimate. And what's nice about it and what's interesting about it is that it, it it sort of centralizes and simplifies this process of making these data deletion or data don't sell my data requests. Um, it's 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 a there, there's there's really no other tool beyond your browser, I guess, on some level. There's really no other tool comparable to it that I'm aware of. Um, and the problem with privacy is the burden that it puts on the end user every single time to manage cookies or go through this kind of painful do not sell my data request process, which you can't even trust is actually going to be fulfilled on the back end. So I, I thought it was pretty interesting. It's not it's not perfect, but it's really points toward something much simpler and and um, easier to use for it for the for the consumer. And it's very nicely designed as well. So um, I thought that was really, really pretty interesting. Great, because uh, that's been the missing piece. Great, great concept. Uh, I'm disappointed that we don't yet have a flavor of California's "Don't sell my information in Oregon" yet. Um, very surprised. You can lead. You can lead that. Yeah, I might, might have to get a ballot measure going, um, which I know Californians love. Uh, we not quite as fond of them here oh, in it's... Oregon, but um, but anyway, I was just going to say it's a great concept. It actually reminds. I think they. They should have chosen the name "Get Delisted" uh, instead yeah. of this, yeah, yeah. Uh, whatever name that they chose. Permission, permission slip. slip. It feels like um, you know a similar concept to our sort of inside joke. My previous company was Get Listed, where we essentially would take you directly to the sites where you needed to get your business listed and essentially autofill your information into those into those places. Um, and this is doing the exact opposite. This is saying. Hey, if your information is on all of these sites, like take it out. Um, and so I really, you know, I think that that's a, it, obviously the concept resonated with our users quite well. And Consumer Reports has a much bigger uh, audience than we ever did. So I, I'm fairly optimistic as to the, especially if you've, you're finding it effective, that I'm fairly optimistic as to the, the uptake of, of users here. So. So I have several comments. One is I live in New York, which doesn't have the same laws as California, and Consumer Reports did not send me the uh, an opportunity to get this product or did not alert me to its existence. So the second, well, I, I'm alerting you to its existence. <laughs> you are, but but I'm just pointing out that they are clearly targeting states where there are laws that make it more impactful. That's one. Two, it still leaves a tremendous onus on you to go and figure out which companies you've dealt with and delist from them, as opposed to 
them just, you know, it, it really puts the onus still on the consumer, which I think, unlike the do not call registry, puts the onus, at least you do it once, and then the onus is on the vendor to respect it. And if they don't, they're penalized. Well, that's that's what that's what we need ultimately. And, and in theory, there's some browser controls that could do something like that. But go ahead. And third is Consumer Reports, to me, has a fiduciary obligation and has had to really champion the idea of privacy across our culture. And yet for years, I have you, I mean, I can, as a member, I have every time I read a bullshit review where about a product that would so invasive of my privacy and they gave it top ratings, I would fill out a comment and tell them that they needed to assess the privacy of this because only could, could, could it be understood in the greater context of that? And then they finally did add privacy to these ratings, and it was one feature amongst 100. So it got rated as like 1% of whether it was a great product or not. So the same products still won, despite the fact that they were incredibly invasive of my privacy with no option to opt out. And I think Consumer Reports of all the organizations in the world is the one best suited to lead the charge for opt-in privacy and i think they've been remiss in not doing so i think you might so don't disagree with your uh exhortation of consumer reports but i think you might be slightly overstating their importance in the consumer review journey i think Wirecutter and cnet and all of these other particularly the sites that review technology products uh as their primary you know, go to market, I think that they're equally well positioned to, to be doing this. So I think it may, well, it may I, take more than the, just one or two of these guys. Right. These days, though, and, refrigerators and, and washing machines and cars all have privacy issues as right. well. So I think that they address a broad range of these. And I think that they, unlike the wire cutter, which is a, you know, affiliate relationship, Consumer Reports has a cleaner record of being independent of the companies. Yeah, they have. They have. They get affiliate revenue now. Also, I'm just. I'm purely talking about it, not necessarily from a business model standpoint, but just a market share and market market awareness of where you go to look for reviews of particularly technology products. So, and the last two products I bought, I went there to look at reviews, and I've been dissatisfied with both Mm. of them. So, yeah. Well, so so uh, Mozilla, just as an aside, has a. Uh, a web, uh, it's the foundation.mozilla.org. They have a have a site called Privacy Not Included, where they specifically talk about websites and s- certain kinds of technology products, mm-hmm. and they give you a pretty comprehensive treatment of it. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's widely known, but they're doing a nice job with that. So that's what you're kind of advocating. But yeah. but but sort of to zoom out for a second before we move on. I mean, I think the the larger point here is that there's been all this rhetoric about how all these websites and all these publishers care about privacy, but the burden has been totally on the consumer right. to understand where to go and to how to opt out and so on and so forth. And we need to really to move, as you're arguing, Mike, to a, to a place where the, the, the privacy controls are really simple and global and you know it's one and done, or you sort of set the rules and everybody observes them. Uh, and we don't and the other the other problem is though that we don't have we can't trust that the that the third parties are going to honor any of these requests you know because for years there was browser communication to publishers who would just ignore those those you know ad ad tracking ad targeting requests but we're moving in the right direction this is a, this is an indication of that Thanks for joining David, Mike, and Greg. To stay on top of the latest developments in local, subscribe to our newsletter at nearmedia.co. We'll see you next week.